Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers. This is episode 95 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name is Sasha Black, and here with me every week is... Daniel Wilcox. Hey, buddy. I still, I, I don't know what it is. I still find that when I have to say my own name, I say it weirdly. Like, I don't know how to say Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, I, you. It I often sounds like you're saying Danny as well, like which I think is really weird because you are Danny, definitely not a Danny. Daniel, I've had Danny, Daniel, Daniel. Like they, they all sound. That was the same. <laughs> it's pretty much the same word. <laughs> How's How your you? week been? Or, uh, okay, yeah, really good. Like um, it's just it has been a good week. So I've been keeping on top of my sort of. Um, I've got a habit tracking calendar now, so I'm making sure that I'm getting up in the mornings and working on the stuff that I want to work on before I get started with the rest of the stuff during the day. And that has been a massive treat for me. And just following last week's breakthrough, just a shift in my mentality as well, because like I find that when I'm actually on a roll and I'm doing things, one thing I don't like is time goes quite quickly. Mm-hmm. But like I look at my calendar now, and I've been on this habit game now for I think 16 days, and it feels like four. So I am getting up early in the morning. I'm working on my book for an hour. I am, um, mm-hmm. as of this week, I've added a 10 minute run into that. And I'm making sure that I'm trying to get at least 10,000 words, uh, 10,000 steps per day as well. So I'm kind of like, as things become more natural in my schedule, I'm then adding new things because there's so much I do want to get done this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been a good week. Like I, I had to list out like all the good things. So I've, I've started the mastermind of activated authors and I've got four incredible authors in there doing amazing things. And that's going really well um i'm making waves with the productivity book i am so deep into it now and so excited and i'm only in like the planning phase i haven't even started actually the writing of it yet um i have been having lots of catch-ups with the hawk and cleaver guys and there's lots going on behind the scenes there i have made time to see two of my friends who live fairly locally nearby which is awesome I ran a Notion workshop on Monday with all of the activated authors where people shared what they were doing with Notion so other people could see how Notion can be used, especially for authors. And then I also launched the Activated Authors dashboard. So people who are members of Activated Authors, I've now created a dashboard where you can like get access to the resources, quick links, and I've just tried to do it so it makes everyone's membership just much easier because at the minute everything is communicated through Slack and sometimes links and things get lost. So it's now a central place where people can go, they can log in, they can manage their account and they can just see all of this extra resourcey stuff that over time will will build up until it's just a massive repository full of just resources for people to write their books. So it's been a very good week. It's not been weird. It's been a very good week. How about you? (laughs) Well, I mean, in one way, it's been a fantastic week. Financially, it's been a great week. I received my advance from Korea which was great it was more than I was expecting as well so that was rather fantastic <laughs> um I have surpassed last year's income uh turnover so that is fantastic as well um I'm very excited and we still have two and a half months left of this tax mm-hmm. year so I'm all like well how much can I smash it by um and my son tested positive for COVID this morning. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, so that was less great. Um, and and then when we went for the test, uh, they asked me to test, like to to twirl the little sticky thing in the throat. And uh, he puked on me. So that was fun did, did as he well. Chunder dragon. He chunder dragoned all in the car, oh, all on me. No. So that wasn't great, but I'll be honest, like it has been, yeah, I like, I don't know. I don't know. It's been, it's been, it's been good. It's been, yeah. it's been good apart from that. And he's okay. Just because I'm sure people will ask the question. He's okay. Uh, he's currently coding on his computer. Uh, so he's not that poorly. He's, he's got a bit of a headache and he sort of is a bit more cuddly and forlorn, but he's, he's, I think he's going to be fine. You know, mm. kids just, this shit bounces off them, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're down for like an hour and then they're fine. Yeah, I know, right? And you, then you shove a bit more cow pollen and then they're back bouncing around the walls again. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, okay. I think yeah, that's a good check in. Um, right, next <laughs> is a level up. <laughs> what? What? Why are you laughing? What have I done? Were you trying to buy time while you were looking at what comes next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really well done. What? Uh, what's great check in. Well done, guys. Yeah, we yeah. pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, level up so we haven't got any level ups for this week but I have now put a post out on the Facebook group for people so if you have a thing that you've achieved especially like let's take into account the whole of 2022 so far and even you know over Christmas if you survived it then put a chat down in the comments let us know and we can shout it out live on the podcast yeah um okay so patreon no new patrons this week but if you would like to join us and be one of our patrons then you can by visiting patreon.com forward slash next level authors um we do have a uh q a booked for the was it the 30th or the 31st of this month i know uh, it was one of those 30th the, the 30th, 30th yes. of this month at 8 p.m uk time so you can come and join us for that q a mm-hmm. um I wonder if we'll be graced with the presence of a baby. I don't know yet. That'll I don't know if she will join us, but yeah. I don't I, know. But I, I don't know. I'm so excited <laughs> though. Baby's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. I've got this mother. Anyway, right. Uh, notices. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any notices? Yes. So we have one spot. I say we, me and Luke Condor have one spot left in our writing short horror stories mini course. Mm -hmm. So if you are wanting to write a short story and getting it done in seven days and then having it critiqued by two um horror authors who have published over 400 stories now on the other stories podcast um then head on over to the other stories.net forward slash mini course and you can join us over there okie dokie i don't think i have any notices um no not today be kind to yourself folks yeah that's a notice that is a notice um okie dokie oh shit thing of the week <laughs> that you've enjoyed <laughs> fuck it oh well, actually yes i've got something go on thing of the week what have you enjoyed so I and people that follow me on Instagram will have seen bits and pieces of this, but I, I've had like two just incredible gifts sent over to me. So number one, I got um, I got an author that I'd never heard of before, never come across in any of our circles. Um, at least I hope otherwise that's incredibly rude for me to announce on the podcast. Um, reached out and basically said that the self-publishing blueprint, which is the book that I wrote last year on how to self-publish your book, uh, was a massive influence in her getting her book published and helping it look as wonderful as it does. And for those on YouTube, I'm holding that book up now because it does look absolutely stunning. Um, so it's Penelope Haig's Pearls from the Wreckage. And there's no other, there's no greater compliment, I think, than, you know, someone actually like showing you the product of the advice that you've given. And so I want to say a big thank you to Penelope. And then also along that vein as well, um, Faye Trask, who is one of our activated authors, sent me over a copy of her Blood Legacy book which is all the hardcover it's all beautiful and that's a book that I helped her work on as well as just I got a freaking trophy <laughs> that for people listening on the podcast it basically is like a gold hulk ripping off silver clothing with world's greatest book coach Daniel ah, Wilcox on there and that's like so lovely she's that is so gonna, sweet that's that is so gonna lovely. sit pride of place on my shelf so it's just been it's been one of those weeks where it's like as a writer you can spend ages just not hearing like from people who are reading your books and you know hundreds of thousands of people who read your books and you can hear nothing so to actually have like physical evidence that you know stuff is going out into the world is just massively rewarding so thank you guys that's awesome and if you haven't yet go check out those books that is very sweet i love that and those are that, those are some very lovely things to have enjoyed this yeah week. i also did get a moose plush from maine <laughs> which i was like that's cool i really like maine i like meese and that's now in the house <laughs> Um, I have been listening to money mindset books. Um, I listened to get rich, lucky bitch, uh, very, very much enjoyed it. I think that's probably, oh, and then the one I'm listening to now is called rich as fuck. I think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I think get it's rich, rich as lucky fuck. bitch. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I get rich, lucky bitch. And by Denise uh, Duffel Thomas. Yeah. So she wrote Chillpreneur. I don't know if you've heard of Chillpreneur. I it haven't. Is, it's quite a uh, well-known, yeah. But then the other one is Rich as Fuck by, I can't remember, somebody <laughs> beginning with A. Um, all right, so comments, let's go. Okay, uh, so a few different comments on the question last week, which was, what does a real breakthrough feel like and when was your last? Uh, firstly, Eden and RSA, a massive congrats on your book deal. Ah, oh, thank you. 
And then uh, Ira says, I've had a couple of writing breakthroughs. My last breakthrough was through Nano. Up until then, I'd been good at procrastinating and Nano taught me how much I can actually get done if I'm strict with myself. I still want to be handwriting my drafts for the most part, but I now know just how productive I can be if I hold myself accountable. It feels great to know what I'm capable of. And that really is the gift of Nano, but it, more than anything else. Um, Edwin says, I'm struggling to think of anything I would call a breakthrough. Most of my moves fall into the category of baby steps small points of inspiration the first time i hit publish might be a breakthrough moment and it certainly felt good after i got past the what have i done jitters and then sam for us says it feels like i've had the greatest idea and that i've been blind up until then which is i think kind of very very similar to the one i had last week where it is just like how have i not seen this before and it's those moments where it kind of pulls in so thank you everyone for commenting and, and yes congrats on your book deal session <laughs> so the quarter four challenge no, not quarter four, quarter one, we, quarter four challenge. We have some winners. So let's announce those and then we'll check in on our quarter one. How, see yes. how we're doing. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to Emily Han, uh, Ember May and Karen Heenan. And uh, we will be getting in touch with you very, very shortly to try and get your uh, addresses so we can send you some wonderful gifts in the post. And congratulations Amazing. to everyone that got involved and did the things they said they were going to do. Yes. Um, okay, so quarter one, Dan will dictate two novels, launch a survey, write three short stories and launch a new podcast. Yeah. Well, how are so you doing? I have, <laughs> I am on the cusp of finishing the dictation for one of the books. Um, the survey is very much in progress at the minute because essentially without doing too much tease, I want it to be, it's, it's going to be like relatively big in my efforts to get answers for it. And I just want to make sure that everything that I want to have covered is covered in it. So I, I just need to make sure that it's all where it needs to be, but that will be going out. I don't think the, the very latest, the end of February, but I think it'll be before that. Um, write three short stories. I've written one. And actually what I've been doing is as I'm going through the short stories, actually shipping them off to my proofreader so that they're all kind of spick and span and good to go. Um, and one of those is back and it's done. And then the new podcast, I have a number of episodes recorded. Um, and that should be what well, I basically got to make sure the format's all correct and then just get that up on the feed and start rolling with it. So awesome. it's a Carmen. OK, so Sasha will read a minimum of five like sapphic books. Um, I've read. Two. What words did you just say? Sapphic. What does that mean? I've never heard that what word sapphic before. Means. Sapphic huh? means, well, so it means like lesbian and bisexual, but it's more inclusive. So it refers to like queer women or like I, I th I'm pretty sure trans women come under that as well. And so it just is a more inclusive term than just lesbian and bisexual. I'm trying gotcha. to use sapphic a bit more because I'm seeing it's, it seems to be rising in popularity. Like when I see like Instagram posts, it's more like sapphic reads rather than lesbian reads. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to use okay. um, sapphic a bit more as it's more inclusive. Like, because I wouldn't say I was lesbian or bisexual. Uh, like I'm, I'm queer, I suppose I would say. Rather, okay. Or yeah, because I don't really like labels and I'm definitely not a lesbian. I don't know if I'm bi because I'd probably be more pansexual. But anyway, this is not about me. Um, the point is queer is a much better term for me than um, any of the others. So sapphic is a much more inclusive term. So, yes, yeah. I am. So I've read two sapphic books and um, I would actually like to read probably 10, I would say, this quarter. But um, the challenge is to read five. So mm -hmm. that's going well. Implement outsourcing. I had the meeting yesterday. So that one's a big tick. Um, it with all outsourcing <laughs> there comes an increase of work that you have to do in order to get the outsourcing outsourced um and it's a bit like um she's got to do some stuff to enable me to do some stuff I have to do some stuff to enable her to do some stuff yeah. we've got two gigantic one-off projects that we're doing and then we've got like an increase in consistent hours that she's taking on every month but it's it's quite a lot of work for the yeah. both of us. Um, and then check off five things on the new business plan. I think I've done two, um, nice. but I will double check. Uh, well, like I'll just, I'll be more planned. Like yeah. next week, my won't, my kid won't have just tested positive for COVID. So I'll be a that bit more organized. Yeah. yeah. And just to um, let people know the forfeit for this one is yes, I can can. So you're going to have to film yourself doing a small section of the can can if you fail. Yes. Um, and a shout out to Chelsea. And I do Val. feel that everyone should be wearing lipstick whilst they do it. 
I feel like that's not a necessary component. Um, I feel like it is a, definitely necessary. <laughs> a big shout out to Chelsea, Val, uh, Alexa, Ida, Ember, Rob and Renee for getting in your accountability already. And if you haven't yet, it's not too late. Jump on over to facebook.com slash groups slash next level authors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So stick at these. <laughs> All right. So question of the week. Uh oh. I cannot fucking believe that we have not asked this question. Is it am I an Aries? The irony, darling, we all know that you're a Pisces. The irony, <laughs> the irony that we have not asked this question is mad. Dan, how do you level up? <laughs> how do you level up your business? And I don't mean you, I mean, how does one, you know, because we haven't asked that question. How does one level up? So it's interesting. I was uh, I was listening to a podcast yesterday on impact theory where they had Tony Robbins being interviewed by Tom Billu. And for people that don't know Tony Robbins, he's just a massive, like huge name and presence in sort of like self-development space and a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, but it kind of, I guess, primes for this question um, because I can, I, I believe I can answer that in, in one word. Okay. progress <laughs> okay like, obviously as well I, I think there are certain components progress is a big part of it but I think it takes a few different things so number one you need to know what your goal is you need to know what it is that you're striving to achieve otherwise how do you measure that you are leveling up um, because you know I think people are leveling up all the time just in different ways and sometimes I think a level up can be negative um, and so knowing what your goal is, knowing the North star that you want to achieve, making actionable, trackable waypoints, bullet points, whatever it is on, you know, baby steps on how you get there. Um, I think reflection is a big part of it. So taking the time to stop and look back to see where you've come from, to see what you're achieving. Um, because I know that especially earlier on in my career, I was very much just like, I was moving forward, but it never felt like I was until I stopped and I looked back and I was like, holy shit. Like, so that person over there, that was me. And now I'm here and it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a number of things and you can, it's a, it's a big question. So you could take it in a, a million different directions, but I think the larger points know what you want your endpoint to be and note for people that endpoint can change at any point And that's fine. But knowing so that you can't track until, you know, what you're pointing towards um as i say create that action plan take time to reflect as you're going through through the things that you're doing but then level up can take you know all sorts of forms like whether it's like a fitness goal and you're just sort of like improving your your stamina your exercise your cardio you know if it's you know working leveling up your craft leveling up your, your health your relationships all those kind of things i think for me leveling up feels like positive progress summed up so i i like to know that as i'm working through and as i'm like trying new things as i'm pushing myself that the changes that i'm doing and the progress i'm making is positive either on me or on someone else in some way um and then bringing all the all that back that it aligns with my values and the direction i'm heading so that's quite a a broad answer but i think that that really is like how i see it Mm, mm. I like that like, well I agree with a lot of what you've said um <clears throat> I think I'd just describe it slightly differently so yeah for me um I agree that you need to know where you're heading that's really important you need to know what the goal is what is it you're trying to achieve the second thing for me is that we do the work now I was going to use the word consistently but I don't think that accurately describes quite what I mean because that doesn't mean you have to do it every day you just have to consistently be moving towards that goal so if you mm -hmm. work more in spurts that but you do a spurt you rest you do a spurt you rest you do that's still consistent progress forward right yeah so there needs to be a continued effort to do the work to reach that goal and mm -hmm. I think um there needs to be a level of willingness to experiment yes and the last one for me is willing about, to fail. Yeah. But I think that comes part and parcel mm. of experimentation. I think the other one for me is about being outside your comfort zone. Um, I think it's really important that you 
if you want to grow, like you can't grow within a small circle, right? We no. have to push ourselves outside of our circle in order to, to level up. We have to continue pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible, the boundaries of what we've told ourselves are possible. We have to keep, you know, um, yeah, like just keep pushing out of outside of our comfort zone. So I suppose the second question, like, because we have both answered that slightly quicker than I thought we we, we would, but that's fine because I do have a part B to this question. Okay, How... I do have something else to add to just before that. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if this will like ruin, it, it probably won't, but um, <clears throat> I think just jumping on, on what you said as well, that, and kind of, linking it back to you know what we're doing with the next level authors podcast and you know we just put out a call out for people to shout out their level ups and i think a lot of people see a level up as like this big grand thing it's just like i've published a book and that's like a huge huge thing but honestly like leveling up along the journey of what you're doing even small steps is leveling up and i think Mm -hmm. a lot of people discount the small stuff and just look for the big but i think as you say if you're consistently moving forward and taking those steps and you can kind of look back and you're getting closer to achieving that thing that's huge but then also one thing that I found hugely on my journey is that, so say my goal is writing a book and I want to build a habit, a consistent habit of like sitting down, writing and doing the words. What I found is that in order to do that, it's not all about the writing for me. There are so many tangential points in your life that you can level up that support the other thing that you're doing. So it's never, it's never as simple as I'm going to just write more so I can do that. Like, because if you want to write more, often there are other things in your life that have to align to let you do that, whether that's like, making sure that you're sleeping enough so that you've got enough rest and you're energized enough to do more writing, whether that's like exercising more, whether that's like, I know that when I was in the um, bowels of a relationship that was sort of um, very, very unhappy, that that massively affected my output. And so I was leveling up, but I was leveling up slower. Mm-hmm. So progress and adjusting and trying to like really focus on that one thing comes from so many different facets. And I think it's just worth bearing that in mind. Yeah. So how are you pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone right now? Oh, mate, don't even. i am so and this kind of goes back a bit to my breakthrough so my i have completely switched what my measure of success is so i have gone from in 2020 i wrote i think 26 books in 2021 i think it was about 16 this year goes like ghostwriting is still a big part of this, but like my own personal books, I'm, I'm looking at probably one. And even then I'm not sure that it's going to be out this year. It might be the beginning of next year. I am switching from production and end product being my measure of success and the thing that's driving me forward into focusing much more on the journey and the quality of the thing that I'm doing and really like allowing myself to dive deep and, go along the channel of the things that I'm very, very passionate about. Um, And as I think I mentioned in last week's podcast, like one of those things is that I'm putting back massively on sort of larger fiction projects and focusing on, you know, other things, Um, which is, it's weird for me. It's scary. Like all I've known for the past four years, at least is rapid release and fast writing. And so to pull back on that and still, have the courage and the confidence to know that I'm going to be okay, especially financially is a big switch. Um, I'm also, I'm also thinking bigger and re evaluating where my informational resources come. Cause I've seen, and I'm not in any way speaking ill of people that do this. Like everyone has their own path. It's just not mine. Um, but you know, I have been around a lot of rapid releases and people that are writing like just fantastic series that are just selling loads. Like they're massive. They write like, and there's 17 books in this series in like a year or two. And they just, they build these audiences of finances. I don't want that. Like my entire focus of what it is I want to achieve from my business has shifted from entertainment to impact in mm-hmm. a very big way. And that is terrifying, but at the same time, like every part of it feels right. Um, That's so interesting because impact has always been my, my goal. That, but I have significance. So that is naturally much more obvious to me because SIG is my number five. Mm. And so for me, it's all 
about impact. I want to help as many writers as possible. I want to yeah. impact as many LGBT teens as humanly possible. Like yeah. for me, I want to leave a fucking giant crater that like will have ripples for eons yeah. and eons and eons and eons. And I'm like, but that is scary. That is yeah. that is scary. Right. And this is the thing. It's it's something that I, you know, it's always it's always been there from like, as I've said to you, I listen to old podcasts that I've done and like, I mention it, but I don't think yep. I've ever like, not that I haven't believed it, but I've never sort of like embraced it. Yeah. Um, and I think like yeah, some of that comes with, you know, getting to the point where you are building a platform that is making a difference and helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other part of that is, again, focusing much less on writing books, which really has been my mainstay of my business for the past four, five, six years. And I'm looking much more at, and the scary part of this, I think, is mostly just because like pandemic related, um, but getting out into the world and engaging more with real people and kind of just seeing where it is locally and sort of more non-locally in the UK, where I can reach out, make an impact and put myself out there Mm. in a big way. Mm. Um, So that really like that is a big push for me. It's a very different direction. It's something that like I say, it, it feels okay because it feels right, but it is a big swing of the pendulum. And mm. I don't I don't mistake that. So So you're well and truly uh, out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Love it's it. wonderful. Love it. How about you? Um how am I outside of my comfort zone? Well, I I'm doing a lot of work on money beliefs Mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable and I'm not perfect and I am really trying to manage the thoughts that I have and I'm really trying to forgive myself for self-limiting beliefs that I've had Um, and that's really hard work and it's not very comfortable and I'm also examining some of my past to see where some of those misbeliefs may have come from Mm. um, and to forgive past self and past people who may or may not have given me those beliefs um, and, and to move into a different realm (laughs) of financial freedom let's say um so that is also changing slightly the shape of my business um I am going to raise all of my prices over the next couple of weeks which is uncomfortable because I don't really like doing that but I think it's be done so is that books is that service I am raising all of my prices everything is going to be raised over the next few months also I'm slightly price I actually didn't realize but I am actually slightly under uh market uh because I just assessed like a lot of the category a lot a lot of people have been raising their prices and I've sort of missed the boat there so I'm going to raise my prices um but like that is like one tiny 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 little thing in a very large plan of oh, yeah. what's going on but yeah I'm kind of reshaping my business and reshaping where I'm going to spend my time I'm outsourcing a lot which is scary and uncomfortable but also needed and necessary so that I can free up more of my time to create so that's sort of one way and then the second way is that I am not allowing myself to have as many excuses anymore for Mm. not doing the important work and that's uncomfortable because I I my natural inclination with my strengths is to do stuff for other people um rather than doing like the short-term things rather than working on the long-term things and so I am really carving out like I feel like I may or may not now hit the end of January because I was meant to hit the end of January to finish this edit but given that my son is now going to be off school for the the last week of January that might not happen anymore which I need to reconcile in my brain and accept and and forgive for that (laughs) because my achiever is not very happy right now but um I'm still gonna give it a go and see see what happens but um yeah I think I think I am not allowing myself 
to make up excuses to do the unimportant work anymore. And that is different. That is new. That is uncomfortable because I definitely default to like emails yeah. or you know whatever it is that I need to do so yeah it's um, easy procrastination I think that kind of stuff it is easy procrastination um and the other thing is being I, I am not afraid to uh what is the word like um um be an a, like a an activist for myself that's not what I mean an advocate advocate Advocate. for myself so like um being asked to speak at a conference I this week have negotiated a higher fee and that was uncomfortable I did not enjoy doing that but I did it and I got a higher fee you know so like it's things like that where I'm trying to push myself outside of my comfort zone you know um yeah so things like that I think for me are are where I am I'm out of my comfort zone so audience question of the week I think it will be we will get more comments if we ask the question how are you outside of your comfort zone than how do you level up I think the question of the week is how do you level up that was the question I asked you but maybe we should ask the audience how are you pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone okay I don't know it's up to you do you think we should ask how do you what how does one level up how does one level up let's Uh, fuck it fuck it let's ask that question how does one level up yeah all right and we will see you next week bye 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 hungry for more if you enjoyed this podcast you can hear more of my angelic accent and dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts for more of me check out the great writer share podcast For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author Podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. Oh, with my kind of like fisheye lens. No, I'm trying. (laughs) (laughs) I...